Just like in the rest of the world, messaging apps are part of everyday life in China. But an application like WeChat does more than just letting you text your friends. It's an operating system for your entire life. Paying for groceries, sending your mom a photo, and even ordering takeout all live in this app. Surviving in China is almost impossible without it, which is why the app recently broke 1 billion users. But like the rest of the internet in China, chat apps are subject to strict censorship. Certain politically sensitive phrases or pictures shared in private messages are known to be censored and blocked. But how well these messaging services are protecting a user's data in China is being questioned after a leak of 340 million private chat records in March. Victor Gevers is a security researcher at the GDI Foundation, a nonprofit organization that finds and reports open and unsecured databases on the internet. A database is a uh, system where you can store information dynamically for um, making websites work or making systems work. So companies like Facebook, where they store large sets of data like messages, photos, uh, connections, contacts, all that dynamic information is being stored in big databases. The 2nd of March, one of the volunteers of the GDI Foundation found an open database in China. We noticed that tables inside of the database, each table was had a dedicated short name for what looked like a messenger. So there was a table called IMS Mesh, QG, QQ, WW, WX, and YY. If data is the new oil, what the researchers found was an open oil field. The records, using data pulled from different private companies in China, contained everything about a person's digital life. Private everyday messages in the database were linked to ID cards and even GPS locations. The source of this database tracking millions of people's private messages in China is unknown. But it was walled off just hours after it was reported to the state-owned internet company, China Telecom. The leak, one of the biggest ever reported in China, is just the latest in a series of leaks exposing everything from the tracking of millions of people in Xinjiang to hotel guest data. China's cybersecurity law, passed in 2017, is supposed to hold companies accountable for data security, but it doesn't stop the government from gaining access to that personal data. China's government has sweeping authority to monitor its citizens, and Chinese companies are not known to challenge orders to give up customer data to the authorities. Beijing's powers of surveillance were solidified by a 2017 national intelligence law, which says that all companies in China must support China's intelligence gathering efforts. A history of data leaks and cooperation with Chinese intelligence are some of the reasons that Chinese firms like Huawei are looked upon with suspicion by the US and other governments, even though they have denied that the law forces them to install backdoors for Chinese intelligence services. We are not passing judgment on how people are using technology in what way, because our cultures are different from each other. But we do criticize these strongly in the way they take their responsibility and how they apply the technology. This is not a pizza delivery service, this is a mass surveillance system. But expansive surveillance is just part of China's approach to controlling the internet that experts say is being exported to other parts of the world. China's President Xi Jinping calls the idea of its walled internet cyber sovereignty. And he has personally promoted at internet conferences attended by American tech executives like Apple's Tim Cook. Governments around the world have been working to tighten their control of the internet. Moscow just announced plans to create its own separate internet, similar to the digital world China keeps inside its great firewall. Thousands of people protested it as a form of tightening political control, showing that China's version of the internet's future isn't welcomed by everyone.